one thing that we will be coming across repeatedly is this concept of graphs. Okay. So you have graphs and you know, I've drawn a few examples or rather I've put pictures of a few examples of graphs over here. Most of these pictures are from Wikipedia, right? The Wikipedia article on graphs. As you can see, there are a few simple things that you'll find over there, right? There are these circles which indicate some kind of uh, some important points and there are lines that indicate connections between the circuits, right? Those lines may or may not have arrows on them. Now, this is an example where it doesn't look anything like the other graphs, but this is actually an example of a map, right? And what it's saying is a city map can be thought of as a graph, right? And why is this useful? Because what it means is that you can now start thinking in terms of graph algorithms to solve problems such as what is the fastest way to get from A to B inside a city, right? So whatever all the navigation that Google Maps does for us and so on is based around constructing these graphical the graph structures, graph data structures corresponding to city maps and then running various algorithms on them. Right? Now from our point of view, what we have is circuit net lists, right? So the digital circuit, for example, that uh, we looked at as far as timing was concerned, can be thought of as, can be visualized as a graph. Okay, We'll get to this in a little bit more detail uh, immediately after this. So I'll skip over it for now. What this is showing you is an example of something called a Steiner tree. Okay. Now why is this useful? Because if you look at the four points, right, A, B, C, and D, right, I can think of these as four different locations, geographic locations, maybe four cities, right? And the question that I'm trying to ask is, how should I construct roads, right? Such that the overall distance between any pair of cities is kept minimum, right? One answer would have been just, you know, join A and B with the road, join A and C with the road, B to D, C to D, right? I can get from any city to any other city that way. But the point is, if I construct, like, if I find two new points, S1 and S2, right, these two values over here, these were not part of my original graph, I find these two points and I say, if I join them to A and B and C and D separately and S1 to S2, it turns out that the overall distance for any, you know, A to D, A to B, A to C, the overall distance that I'm going to cover is going to be minimized. Obviously, you know, it's, uh, if I had a direct road from A to B, that would be shorter. But what that would mean is that if I then had to go from A to B and B to D, that would be longer than going A to S1 to S2 to D. Right? So what the Steiner tree is doing is minimizing the overall road length. Why is this useful for us? Because in the context of circuits and VLSI, this is an example of the routing problem. Right? We have all these different... Uh, computational elements that are going to sit on a, a chip and I need to connect all of them with wires and in order to minimize delay and to minimize the chances of problems with routing I need to minimize the length of the wires that's where Steiner trees come okay so this is just an example I mean the, the reason I'm putting all of this is here, here is to show that graphs are sort of fundamental and very important in the context of circuits and design, electronic design automation in general. So graph terminology. What I mean by terminology is that these are all terms that you will repeatedly come across in the context of various graph representations of algorithms and also in the context of uh, understanding how graphs can be used to solve various problems. Okay? So the most important terms are vertex and edge. Right. So a vertex, also called a node, and in our context, we'll also come across uh, the term actor, right? Those are all different terms which are used for these blue circuits, right? So this is an example of a node or a vertex, right? So these terms are interchangeable. I will pretty much be just switching between them, in fact, uh, you know, without really differentiating in any way. The word actor is much more rare. Uh, it comes in a more specific context. It's not really used generally in uh, graph theory, but it uh, will be used in some of the things that we discuss, some of the algorithms that we discuss later. Okay. 
So there is also a concept of directed versus undirected, right? And as you can sort of uh, imagine from the pictures that I have put over there, the undirected edges are ones which don't have any arrows on them, right? Whereas the directed edges are ones with arrows, right? So for example, the graph on the left is undirected, whereas the graph on the right has directed edges. Now you'll notice that there is one special edge over here, right? This one which goes back and forth, right? I have drawn two arrows. This is usually not represented in this way. It would more typically be represented as two separate edges, right? So uh, uh, after that, I mean, there is the concept of degree of a node, right? So what does degree of a node mean? Over here, the degree is equal to the number of edges going out of the node, right? In this case, the degree is equal to two. Okay. Now, in this case, the degree is a little bit more tricky. What we would normally say is over here, the degree is equal to 2. But I can also think of the in degree, that is the number of incoming edges, right, is equal to 1. And the out degree is also equal to 1 because there is one edge going out. Okay. I mean, the in and out are based uh, completely on the direction of the arrow, right? If the arrow is pointing into a node, it means that edge is coming into that. And if the arrow is pointing away from that node, it means the edge is out of that node and therefore contributes to the out degree. And typically, when we are talking about graph algorithms, we also need to define what we mean by the problem size, right? Just like for sorting, we had n numbers. In graph algorithms, we need to know the number of, uh, uh, what would we define as the problem size? Now, one way of saying, uh, thinking about it is to say that if I have, as you can see over here, right, I have three vertices. And if I say that, you know, the graph is directed, then I could have basically n squared edges, right? That is, for every pair that I want, I could have one uh, edge going from A to B. In fact, with directed edges, I can even have something which, this is a self-loop. Right, so this is also a valid directed edge, right? Whereas in undirected, I would never have a self loop because it, I, it's you know, not clear how I sort of go out of a uh, node and come back to itself. Okay, so there is no concept of self loops in undirected graphs, but in directed graphs, I can think of a self loop. So for a directed graph, for example, I could have up to n squared or v squared. In other words, if I have v vertices, then I could have up to v squared edges. Whereas over here, I could have v choose 2. That is v into v minus 1 by 2. Right? This many number of possible edges. So in other words, bottom line is E itself is O of v squared. Remember what I said about big O notation? It basically means a proportionality. So it doesn't matter whether it's actually v squared or v into v minus 1 by 2. As far as I am concerned, all of that is O of V squared. But in practice, the actual number of edges may not be anywhere close to V squared, which is why we usually keep the number of edges separate and talk about you know running complexities, for example, being some function like order of E log V, right? Rather than saying order of V squared log V, right? Which technically is also correct. Okay. So with all of that terminology in mind, let's move forward. And once again, look at some more terminology. This is with regard to something called paths in a graph and cycles, right? Which will again become useful to us later when we are doing some of the analysis on ESP algorithm representations. Okay, so this is an example of a graph, right? I've just drawn some six nodes over there, and I want to illustrate what a path could look like. An example is what I've highlighted in green over there: A to B to C. Right? So, for example, this is a path which goes from A to B to C. Right? This is a valid path because it basically goes along uh, edges that are present in the graph and also respects the direction of those edges. Right? So, what I mean by edges that are present in the graph, for example, A to E, for example, is not a path because there is no direct edge, but A to B to D 
to E is a valid path. Okay. So similarly, this one here A, B, C, D, F is a valid path. Right. On the other hand, A, B, C, E, D is not a valid path because as you can see the one that I have crossed out over here, I would have to go from E to D. There is no edge from E to D in this graph. Right? There is an edge from D to E, but not from E to D. So the direction matters. Okay. So in other words, this is not a valid path in this graph. Okay. What happens if I take a path and eventually come back to where I started from? That would be a cycling. Right? So for example, I go from A to B, B to C, C to D and D back to A. That's a closed loop or otherwise known as a cycle in the graph. Okay. Once again, the direction of the edges of course matters over here. Right. Another example of a cycle of course in this case is A, B, D, A. Right. So this would be called A, B, B, A. Right. The previous one I would write this as A, B, C, D, A. Right. So the notation that I'm using over here is basically to say that by putting the sequence of nodes in the graph one after the other, in the path or the cycle one after the other, I can indicate exactly what the cycle or the path that I'm uh, that I have in mind is. Okay. So this is A B D A. This on the other hand, C to uh, yeah C to F. And in fact, it's not very clear. Oh, okay. So I, I actually have an error over here. The one that I have marked as wrong is probably not the one I should have marked as wrong. I should probably have said that this one is the one with the problem. Why? Because I can go from C to E and E to F, but then there is no F to C path backwards okay so c to e okay e to f okay f to c no path right so because of that this is not a valid cycle once again in this graph okay. all right so with all of this in mind uh, again just one more example of a invalid cycle uh, once again over here, if you really look at it, the D to E edge is also uh, in error, right? So this is also in error. 